Hello and welcome to my latest video where I'm going to talk about The Way of the Fearless Writer by Beth Kempton and all the annotations that I have made inside the book. So why am I doing this? Well, I get so overwhelmed by non-fiction books. They often spark something in my brain and I get excited, can't concentrate, then get overwhelmed with the possibilities. So I've struggled to finish many simply because they firstly they inspire me and then I get crashing crushing self-doubt so the book through no fault of the author feels like an emotional roller coaster and it's absolutely exhausting however I love to fill my head with knowledge and ideas and I'm determined to get out of this loop of emotions when reading non-fiction. So I came up with a cunning plan and that is annotating the book, giving myself permission to basically slow down as I'm reading it, to really absorb the words and take notes of those sentences and paragraphs that stand out to me, that make me excited, but the whole act of annotating makes it seem less overwhelming, I guess, because I'm not in a rush to finish the book, but I'm relaxing into it and making notes. So this may be a little bit of a niche video, but I thought I'd give it a go and share what I've been up to in this book, what, for want of a better expression, what takeaways I've gained from the book. I know annotating books is controversial, maybe more so in fiction than non-fiction, but personally I love seeing a book that's been well read with notes in the margins and sticky markers sticking out of the pages. So as you can see here, I have a number of sticky markers sticking out the side of the pages and the brass clip basically just that's where the acknowledgements are and the index page and the resources and stuff like that that um, Beth refers to so I've just kept those pages out of the way for the moment. If you like books kept in a pristine condition with no marks on the pages whatsoever then I advise you maybe don't watch this video it may not be for you so this is a beautiful copy hardback of the way of the fearless writer by beth kempton previous books by beth include wabi sabi and freedom seeker as well as calm christmas so there's freedom seeker now this is her first book her debut non-fiction and it's published by Hay House and then Beth went on to be published by and I always struggle to pronounce this Piatkus Piatkus how do you say it anyway she's now being published by that particular publishers and that's why her calm Christmas one is also the same size and style and i love i love the size of the book it's not overwhelming it's a cute little book but that doesn't take away from the impact of what's inside rather it just seems less overwhelming now beth sent me this book because she was appearing on my podcast hiding under the desk and i'll link that interview in the description box below also she included a little note when she sent it to me such a pleasure to have met you on this writing path now that is referring to the fact that i was her student in her book proposal masterclass course and that's how i first got to know about beth because I went on one of her courses under the Do What You Love website that she has. On the back, this this is what happens when I was driving along and I was listening to a podcast with Sasha Black, the Rebel Author podcast, and she was talking to Rachel Heron, and I even made a note, 41 minutes into episode two with Rachel Heron, her new thing that she's doing with Rachel, and I had to pull over in the car 
to write this down because it kind of related with what I was reading in Beth's book. It's almost like he's saying you can't control the outcome. Control is something that stood out for me as I read through the book. And you'll see that as we go through the annotations. So this was a nice little card from Beth that I took advantage of and made notes with it. But what is also interesting about this book for me is that Beth wrote the proposal for this alongside her students in the book proposal masterclass. And it is interesting seeing what she put together and what the actual finished product is. I think for me personally, writing my own proposal also called Hiding Under the Desk, and I've very nearly finished it. I'm just putting the final touches to it now before I submit it. And this is something that Beth also said in the podcast interview I had with her. Your finished product does not look exactly like the proposal. And this, to me, was really heartening to hear because I was getting so hung up on the proposal and worrying, if you like, about what would happen if things changed in the future and how it would impact the book. So it was very reassuring to read through the book and see how it had changed slightly from when Beth was putting the proposal together and also what she said in the interview. So what's this book about? On the back cover, it says... A revolutionary approach to writing inspired by ancient Eastern wisdom. Join author and Japanologist Beth Kempton on a sacred journey to uncover the secrets of fearless writing which have lain buried in Eastern philosophy for 2,000 years. In a radical departure from standard advice and widely held assumptions about the effort and suffering required for creative success, the way of the fearless writer will show you there is another way to thrive, a path of trust, ease, freedom and joy. Learn how to free your mind so your body can create, transform your relationship with fear, dissolve self-doubt, shift writer's block, access your true voice and bravely share your words with the world. Now, as I was reading that out, yesterday I uploaded a long read on my Substack for paid subscribers, which was all about the overthinking that I do when I'm creating and about to share a a project, a writing project or a mentoring project. And I think a lot of it comes from my, I don't know, my fear of asking money in return for something that I've created. And this is part of a narrative that I have in my head of the starving artist trope. And I think this this is something that Beth kind of refers to here in that we have to be starving, suffering artists in order to be successful as writers. But we don't. There is another way to thrive. And we just have to kind of push through the various tropes that are blocking us, but also the other mindset issues that are blocking us and the fears that are blocking us. So straight away in the book, I've put a post-it and I think I was doing these as I was thinking about interviewing Beth for my podcast. But I wrote here, the point that spoke to me most, and maybe this is down to where I am in my writing process, is about relinquishing control. I told you control really stood out for me. So for me, this means putting thoughts of agents, publishers and audience even out of my head and writing from the heart, bringing out the words that are within me. And I've put some um, washi tape over a couple of names here because it reminded me of a couple of people within my Confident Creative Club. And X gives her audience real or imagined too much control. And another X can't finish her writing as it feels it'll go out of control. So who is Beth Kempton? Ah, before we get on to that, she's very kindly signed the book for me. And I love that she's put 
the world needs your medicine and that arrived at a a particularly self-doubting kind of moment for me so thank you Beth for writing that so who is Beth Beth Kempton is a Japanologist, self-help author and writer mentor whose books have been translated into more than 25 languages. Beth has been a student of Japanese life for a quarter of a century and has two degrees in Japanese. She is also a qualified yoga teacher and a Reiki master trained in the Japanese tradition in Tokyo. And it says down here as well that Beth offers support and inspiration to writers and dreamers teaching how words and ideas can heal, inspire, uplift, connect and help us make the most of our time in this beautiful world. So again here I've written key messages, my takeaways, relinquishing control, making a start, which is perhaps the hardest bit. So I won't show you every single page of this because I don't think that's fair to Beth at all, but I will show you the contents page where she talks about part one and she brings in her Japanese knowledge here, the first gate, I'm not even going to pronounce the, the Japanese because you'll just laugh at me, the first gate, um, she shows some of her own notes, talks about the gate of desirelessness, um, quietening, releasing, practicing, opening, the ceremony at the first gate, then she talks about part two, which is initiation, the gate of formlessness, and this is all about expanding, flowing, shaping and sharing. And then part three, integration, the gate of emptiness. And this is apprenticing, authoring, harmonising, living and ceremony at the third gate. And then she has beyond the gates and epilogue. So and the first sticky note that I have put here, I think at the time I was very much reading it with my interview with Beth coming up and with that in mind. So on my post-it note, I've put what was Beth's turning point, what changed to make her step in front of the curtain. And as you can see there, the word curtain really stood out for me, stepping in front of the curtain to share personal stories with the world. And this is because one of my club members inside the Confident Creative Club talked about myself in terms of pulling back the curtain on the the kind of writing mindset process and showing that and demonstrating so not just talking about but demonstrating with my own actions of what it's actually like to be an unconfident writer and that it's not just her that feels this way and I am demonstrating that it's others as well and that you can push through those doubts those self-doubts to one side and then I also had um, this is very woo, but I also had a healing session with a very lovely, beautiful lady. And she also saw in her head, and this was before something my club member said, that she saw the Wizard of Oz when she was doing healing on me and the Yellow Brick Road. Because obviously in the Wizard of Oz, the curtain is pulled back to reveal that this big powerful almighty wizard was actually just a little bloke doing stuff behind the scenes anyway that's why the word curtain really stood out for me and also the the bit down here where beth has written you'll experience the joy of shining your light for them as in your audience and the people that read your words and this actually makes me think of a lighthouse and I'm a big advocate of shining your light like a lighthouse and you know not being pushy or salesy and saying come and read my work all the time but actually expressing yourself in a way that shines your light that encourages people towards what you are writing so yes the word curtain and lighthouse really stood out for me on this page, as well as the word control, um, which comes up later in the book. And also here, these bits that I've highlighted, Beth was talking about her own experiences. She was trying to control what the book would become and how it would be received by the world and that she wanted to write the perfect book, but was trying to nail down her idea too soon and i've just written there trust the process be patient as idea 
takes shape. And those three words, trust the process, they also come to me rather a lot when I'm having my healing sessions. So like I say, it's a little bit woo, but I love that. I love opening your mind up to listening to your intuition, if you like. And um, I know Beth is also a big advocate of that sort of thing. So yes, that is the sort of things that have, were coming to me in her kind of introductory section of the book. Then we get to the first gate, the gate of desirelessness. And again, she writes without trying to control what spills out. And again, I've written relinquish control. For me, what does relinquishing control look like or feel like? So I think it's about relinquishing control of... So I was thinking of a faceless, nameless agent the person who would be reading my proposal. So instead of thinking of what I want to write, what is it within my heart and soul, I was thinking about how it would be received by this agent, by a publisher. And as Beth, I, I explained this as well to Beth in my podcast interview. And she said, and I'm paraphrasing here, but basically the, the agent... And the publisher is not your audience for this book. They are just the person that helps you get it in front of the audience and makes the book the best it can be. And that really spoke to me as well and really helped me think about, actually, Helen, what is it that you want to write in your book proposal? What is true to you? What speaks to you and what do you want to convey stop thinking about this nameless faceless agent who may or may not read your words so that really helped me and it actually pushed me through and got my writing sample finished and I'm now at the stage where I'm literally just tidying the proposal up before I send it out into the world so already from the podcast and from the first 20 odd pages of this book, Beth helped me with my own writing because she has put so much emphasis. And I took away from this all the bits about relinquishing control. And as Beth has written down at the bottom here, you just have to open your mind and heart and your notebook and write and I've put relinquish control with a little heart, which means that really spoke to me. Then on the opposite page, <laughs> I put again relinquishing control because um, Beth had written a kind of mysterious alchemy that happens and to su suggest that we are in charge of what would be to give ourselves too much credit. This is where trust comes in and trust means being open to what might happen without trying to force a particular result. And again, this spoke to me. This is something that I see with my mentees. This is something that I try and encourage them to explore with their writing, to experiment, to use their writing journals, to discover their writing voice without trying to force your writing voice. And I know in the very beginning, when I first started blogging back in 2006, seven and eight, I was trying to force my writing voice and I was very much influenced by other people who were writing at the time. And it was only through relaxing and stop trying to force my words that I, I got I found my own voice. I found my passions, my desires when it came to writing. Beth has actually put some people refer to this as aimlessness, others as no goals. And this is where I've put here. This is something I refer to as the experimental phase. So, yeah, whatever word you use to describe it, just to allow yourself to relax into your work and and stop worrying about your purpose or what your goals are when you're a beginner and you're first starting trying to write, but also through different seasons of when you're writing to allow yourself that time just to explore ideas. 
and Beth has put here, it was only once I let go of the need to control the outcome of doing the work that I was able to start writing my first book. And I've put, is this what I need to do? When we focus on writing as a sacred act, we stop trying to control what happens. And again, here I've put trust the process, trust the mess, embrace the mess. I've skipped ahead a bit, but I've put here, Beth has a gentle nurturing way of writing. Um, this is what my book aims to dig into. Why are we not writing? What is stopping us? When you're not choosing writing, why is that? What message are you sending yourself and your family? And I think about this a lot in terms of um, there is another member of my club. I've spoken to her before about when she talks about self-care and she chooses not to write when she's having a self-care day. And I said, well, isn't writing something that you love to do, something that you're passionate about? So why would you choose not to write when you're having a self-care day um, and it could be that you choose just to write something different you choose to write nurturing words in your journal instead of forcing yourself to do your big project or what it, whatever it is that you're currently working on and just down here beth has written i am a better version of myself for having written so for those of you who keep putting writing off, please take those words to heart. And here I've put, I'm already worrying about what my second, third, fourth book will, will be. I've not even finished writing my first. I've only written the proposal. I mean, it's a lengthy proposal, but I still not finished the book. So I'm already worrying about what the next few books will be. And I've put, I need to free myself from these thoughts. The work of the fearless writer is done step by step, day by day. This is something that I stress with my club members. And this is something I talk about a lot. Take tiny steps, break your projects down and take tiny steps and keep working towards your writing dreams. So this next section, I've, I've, this is what I took away from what Beth has been writing. Don't turn your worries, the what ifs, into energy that gets stuck within you. Having creative fears and self-doubt and comparing yourself to others, imposter syndrome, all that sort of thing, it does create energy and this energy can block you. It can make you lose your energy. It can make you not want to write. It can mess with your head. It can lie to you. So, yeah, we need to release it. And again, in my healing session yesterday, I could see part of me was telling myself to journal more and to release the negativity that spirals inside my head so it doesn't end up as energy that I use to clench my teeth together, for example. So yes, that spoke to me quite a lot. Now this is something, travel companions, it says here. And within our Confident Creative Membership Club, we've talked about friends and family that may not understand what we're doing. That doesn't make them a bad friend or a bad family member. And as Beth writes here, not every good friend makes a good travel companion on the writing path, simply because not everybody gets it. And we have to learn, again, it's all about energy, isn't it? Not to let that maybe misunderstanding energy or, or critical, it may come across as critical voices, don't let that energy that negative energy impact your writing. This is your path. This is your creative dream. So you need to be almost single-minded, bloody-minded in terms of making your way forward and not letting external voices, whether they're online or in real life, affect your creativity. And it says here, an essential part of becoming a fearless writer is building a network of people you can trust for soul nourishment, support and encouragement without criticism or any sense of competition. Often those who really get it 
or those who are doing it too. They don't judge or criticise your writing to feed their own ego. They encourage you and celebrate and commiserate with you as you do with them. Oh, that was my dog walking past <laughs> and dislodging the um, tripod. But I've put there, this is what the Confident Creative Club does. And if this is something that you need, some soul nourishment from similar minded writers and creatives and do come and check out the confident creative club we will welcome you with absolute open arms even if you don't feel like you are a writer the club is especially for people like you who don't feel they are real writers so yeah check us out honestly it will really help you we are your travel companions as you go down this road. Again, this line resonated with me. I had little confidence in my abilities and believed everyone was better at the job than me. And I have to say, just going back to the Confident Creative Club, when I started that creative club, I had so many self-doubts. I was just overwhelmed with the self-doubt and the imposter syndrome but I know now that everybody feels like that when they're doing something out of their comfort zones then Beth talks about gaseous state writing she relates writing to being like gas and this is because she talks about water and how its different stages can teach us about the writing process. And this is a particular section that really spoke to me. So gaseous state writing, for example, is where we're writing in our journals. I think, I, I, I don't want to say anything that's wrong. Yeah, gaseous state writing, also known as journaling. So this is when we write largely words down that are not for other people to read. And then we have the liquid states, which is where we start to write. This is the liquid state is what I needed to do with my book proposal. So write where it's not actually meant to be shared yet, but is my heart and soul of what I want to say before I get to the solid state writing, which is when we start to edit and shape our words ready for them to be received by an audience. So, Beth, I hope I've explained that fully, um, properly. And then Beth also puts in um, little exercises to do every few pages. And um, this is one that I have done. I am tired of being stressed about my writing, so much pressure that I'm putting on myself. I daydream about being published, um, making a name for myself, making a good, great living out of my creativity. And what's sacred to me, my office, my desk, my writing time. And what I really want to write about is my life experiences around writing fiction. And I've put, I think I do, but it's scary. I mean, there is lots more that I have highlighted in this book. Lots of it spoke to me. Beth has put here, I carried out an in-depth survey of over 1,100 writers, more than 40 countries, which revealed that many of our fears are universal. We fear being seen, judged, ostracised or ridiculed, and we fear both failure and success. All these fears arise from a worldview that sees us as separate from one another. And on that subject, I designed a questionnaire a couple of years ago myself before I started the Confident Creative Club, but actually was what led to the creation of the Confident Creative Club. And I um, discovered very similar results with my questionnaire um, that everybody was terrified, everybody fears, everybody, um, almost everybody had imposter syndrome. So I knew then it wasn't just me. And that's why I started writing about this subject more and sharing my own personal writing journey and mindset issues to show people that it's not just them, that they are not alone. And this is what I mean about the curtain 
pulling back the curtain and this is why I started the Confident Creative Club. Beth talks sharing your words and some of what she said is very similar to what she talked about in the book proposal masterclass so that can help you as well. Sharing is my issue. Sharing with a wider group of people other than my friendly community is really difficult for me. But then I put what well, this is what I'm all about. By sharing my words, I hope to inspire other women to share theirs. And in the little margin there, I've written midlife creative dream chasers because I think that's what we are. So, yeah, this bit all about sharing, seeing and being seen was really, really helpful to me. And I made lots of highlights, not lots of notes in it. Beth Kempton's book annotated, highlighted, made useful notes, you know, used it to help my own writing and mentoring journey and to help me push forward with my own book proposal. It also helped me knowing that I wasn't the only one to feel a particular way that published authors such as Beth Kempton. People who in my eyes are very inspiring are also struggling with these issues and so it gives me warmth that I'm not alone and yeah I, I highly recommend the book. Do take a look at it. In the way of the fearless writer Beth is targeting those writers which I think is the majority of us who are struggling with fear and she provides a path using the knowledge she's gained as a Japanologist and from her knowledge of ancient Eastern wisdom to show how you can have a flourishing writing life yourself. And she talks about rituals, dedication, commitment and predicts you'll want to share your work with others as you progress along this path. So if that is what you are looking for, then do pick up a copy of this book. Anyway, this was a, a kind of experimental video. Um, like I said, it might be quite a niche subject. So if, well, do you know what? I enjoyed doing this. It helped me again going through the book and pulling out the bits that have helped me and inspired me. So I may just do it with another book in the very near future. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you with another video very soon.